With Taskmaster set to step into the upcoming Black Widow movie, it's time to dive into a long history that's strange even by the standards of the Marvel Universe. From a school for supervillains to the South American village populated by Hitler clones, here's the truth behind the Taskmaster. The Taskmaster made his first appearance in 1980's Avengers No. 195, arriving on the last page to set up his full appearance in the next issue. Created by David Michelinie and George Perez, his entire identity was built around one simple idea — anything you can do, he can do just like you can. The Taskmaster's power is usually referred to as photographic reflexes, which is a fancy way of saying that if he sees someone doing something, he can replicate that action exactly, and he keeps that skill for the rest of his life. That would be a pretty impressive ability in the real world, but Taskmaster lives in the Marvel Universe. He can settle in with some footage of Spider-Man or Black Panther and hop off the couch a few hours later with the ability to perfectly replicate their movements. Of course, there's one interesting limit to all this. Photographic reflexes are Taskmaster's only power. That means that while he can watch Captain America throwing his shield or Iron Fist doing kung fu, he can only replicate the movements. He doesn't have the Super Soldier Serum Enhanced Strength behind the throw, or the ability to channel the power of an immortal dragon into his hand. The same goes for more mundane abilities, too. While he can spend all day watching Wolverine, he's never going to have an adamantium-coated skeleton. Still, he's come away from his battles against the Avengers with some pretty impressive abilities. While he's done his share of hands-on villainy, the Taskmaster's true calling has always been education. Of course, Taskmaster's version of education isn't all that selfless, especially when you consider that his school, the Taskmaster Academy, is less of a learning institution and more of a for-profit training center for henchmen. For a low price, Taskmaster takes on classes of aspiring supervillains and teaches them how to not only fight like superheroes, but more importantly, how to fight against them. There's no better way to prepare for fighting Captain America than by training with a guy who can fight exactly like Captain America. While this mostly functions as a pretty amazing explanation for where all the masked members of HYDRA and AIM get the confidence to try to punch out Iron Man or whomever, it's worth noting that it's not just the bad guys who've taken advantage of Taskmaster's skills. Taskmaster was also responsible for training John Walker, better known as U.S. Agent, during the latter's brief stint as Captain America, and for training government superhero recruits in Avengers The Initiative. We're working really hard. You're not working hard enough! I need results! Class dismissed. Like Deadpool, the Taskmaster made his living as a super-powered mercenary for hire when he wasn't running henchmen classes, meaning that the two characters ran in pretty similar circles. While their first encounter didn't exactly end on the best of terms, they'd end up encountering each other pretty often, and that eventually led to a friendship. One of the Taskmaster's most prominent roles in the comics came when he was a member of Deadpool's supporting cast. His frequent appearances were mostly due to the fact that Deadpool hired Taskmaster's ex-girlfriend, Sandy Brandenburg, to be his secretary. But when Deadpool blew up, lost his memory, changed his codename to Agent X, and was then revealed to have not been Deadpool all along, Taskmaster helped to retrain him as an assassin and later fought alongside him. In more recent years, the two mercenaries have had a more back-and-forth frenemy relationship. They've occasionally come to blows while on opposite sides of a conflict, but Deadpool was also willing to help Taskmaster out by going easy on him in a fight so that Taskmaster could still get paid. He even invited Taskmaster to his bachelor party. Taskmaster's status as a sort of utility player of the supervillain world has led to more than a few minor roles in projects outside of comics. The most prominent one, at least until Black Widow hits theaters in 2020, has been his presence in 2018's Spider-Man for PlayStation 4. In the game, the Taskmaster occasionally shows up to challenge Spider-Man, but he does so in a way that suits how his character works in the comics. Rather than confronting him directly at first, Taskmaster puts Spidey through a series of challenges. Presumably, he does this so that he can get a good look at Spidey in battle, which leads to a fight where he actually does show up doing a pretty passable impression of Spider-Man's own moves. If you know my moves, you know I'm gonna wreck you! Surprise me, if you can. While he's mostly shown up as a villain or a supporting character, the Taskmaster has dabbled in being a protagonist in his own right, thanks to two self-titled miniseries. 
The first is a relatively straightforward action-adventure, but his second miniseries is full-on bananas. The main premise is that the Taskmaster, ironically enough, has a memory problem. His brain is so loaded up with superhero moves that his muscle memory has overwritten other, less important things, like his past. In order to keep himself centered, he has to keep tracking down his own memories, following his history so that he can piece it together and figure out who he is. It's sort of like Memento, only a million times weirder. The path to Taskmaster's memories leads him through things like an encounter with Dawn of the Dead, a Latin American drug dealer who turns out to be a white American S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who taken in the Dawn of the Dead identity after Taskmaster trained him. That, however, pales in comparison to where that series ends. Vavelsburg 2, a small town in the Bolivian Andes where Nazi scientists escaped to after World War II in order to continue their experiments cloning Hitler. The most successful result was the longtime Marvel villain The Hatemonger, but the scientists wound up with a gigantic stockpile of cloned Hitler brains, which leaked the Fuhrer's biochemical essence into the local water supply. The result? Every man, woman, and child in the town essentially has Hitler's brain, leading to a constant warfare among themselves for control of the town. Beyond Vavelsburg 2 and the Dawn of the Dead, the big reveal of the Taskmaster series is that it finally gives us the Taskmaster's origin and his real name. That was what he'd forgotten, the piece of knowledge that sent him on that bizarre quest, and the answers change almost everything. For years, the Taskmaster has been getting his orders from a secret organization called the Org, but as it turns out, the Org doesn't exist. Instead, it's the wife that Taskmaster doesn't remember having, Mercedes Merced, who was also his partner back when he was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent named Tony Masters. As Nick Fury tells Steve Rogers, the Taskmaster has been a good guy all along, he just doesn't remember it. As Masters, he was sent to infiltrate the supervillain community for S.H.I.E.L.D. using his powers and creating the Taskmaster identity as his cover. Unfortunately, thanks to a flawed prototype of the Super Soldier Serum that expanded his powers, all of those skills he'd absorbed overwrote the personal parts of his memory. Mercedes has been minimizing the damage for years by creating the Org, acting as Taskmaster's handler, and pointing him in the right directions for S.H.I.E.L.D. Of course, once he discovers all this, he immediately has to absorb yet another sequence of physical actions, forgetting the revelations about Tony Masters, and putting a heartbroken Mercedes right back into the role of working with a husband who doesn't remember she exists. While it's doubtful that the Dawn of the Dead or the Taskmaster Academy's acclaimed henchman resource program will make it into the MCU, it's not difficult to imagine how Taskmaster's presence could be felt in the upcoming Black Widow movie. Most of Natasha Romanoff's history has to do with her training in the Red Room, a secret Soviet program designed to create a series of highly trained agents who are given the codename of Black Widow. In addition to being briefly shown in Avengers Age of Ultron, the Red Room also produced Peggy Carter's nemesis, Dottie Underwood, on the Agent Carter TV show. With the Taskmaster's history of training supervillains, and his ability to serve as the perfect teacher in virtually any style of combat, it's easy to picture him as one of Natasha's trainers. Even more than the visual, the Black Widow version of the Taskmaster captures the character's signature abilities with an accuracy that's really exciting, both for longtime comics readers and the MCU fans who have never picked up a comic in their lives. Moviegoers have seen these characters in action for over a decade, and whether they realize it or not, they've seen how those movies distinguish their characters in ways that go beyond their costumes. Captain America, Black Panther, and the Winter Soldier, for instance, all essentially have the same set of superpowers, but they each have a fighting style that doesn't look like the others. You're not going to see Black Panther deliver that one sternum-shattering way tie kick like Cap does, and you're not going to see Bucky Barnes pull off the same acrobatic attacks that T'Challa busts out either. You will, however, see the Taskmaster do it all. In the Black Widow trailer alone, we see him perfectly mimicking Captain America throwing his shield, Hawkeye's draw with his bow, and Black Panther's claws, among other moves. What's more, Black Widow seems to be making an effort to not just copy the style, but to mimic specific moments from earlier films. The shot with his claws in particular bears a striking resemblance to a shot from the war sequence in Avengers Infinity War. Much like the way that the comic book Taskmaster ran his school for aspiring supervillains, the cinematic version has also embraced his calling as a teacher. 
This time, he's the guy running the Red Room, the top-secret Russian training facility that produces the super spies of the Black Widow program. As a result, he's someone that our most familiar Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff, knows from her past. He's also apparently responsible for training Yelena Belova, the second Black Widow in the comics, who initially set out to eliminate and replace Natasha long after the original's defection to S.H.I.E.L.D. The fact that it's the Taskmaster, however, adds another layer to the story of Black Widow returning to the Red Room with the intention of taking it down. Not only does the Taskmaster's ability to replicate any movement that he sees make him the perfect combat instructor, it also hints at something that might just be the true purpose of the modern MCU Red Room. Outside of a brief hallucinatory flashback in Avengers Age of Ultron, we never really see much of what Natasha's training was like in the MCU, and what we do see seems like some pretty standard stuff. The fact that Taskmaster can fight like the Avengers, though, might just mean that this resurrected Red Room isn't just training its soldiers to take on enemy spies. In the comics, the thing that makes training with the Taskmaster such an alluring prospect is that if you're sparring with a guy who fights exactly like Captain America, then you might just figure out how to beat Captain America. If that sounds like a long shot, consider that Cap and the Winter Soldier, the product of a similar Red Room-adjacent program, laid a beatdown on Iron Man that was about as devastating as the one Thanos did. If the Red Room is turning out soldiers designed specifically to take down superheroes, then there's a very good reason why Natasha would want to take them down that goes well beyond revenge and atoning for her own dark past. We'll just have to wait and see if the Task student can defeat the Task Master. Look around, Romanoff. The world will remember this day. The day their heroes failed them. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.